I'm building every piece of furniture in this house, and today we're starting with this bedroom. This room is gonna undergo a complete transformation. Refinished floors, new trim, new paint and paneling, a built-in closet, a handmade bed, a wooden ceiling. But today, we're gonna start with a pair of super modern floating nightstands. We ran into some stability issues, which we overcame. We're also gonna talk about the design process and how we gathered some inspiration. We got a full sheet of plywood. Both of these nightstands will be made out of just one sheet. I'm gonna cut it in half just to make it a little bit more manageable, and I will make the rest of the cuts at the table saw. I need to rip this into three 15 inch wide pieces, but the first one I'm gonna cut just slightly over 15 inches because the factory edge is a little gnarly. So I'll cut it like 15 and a quarter, then cut it down to 15 and then 15 and then 15. So now we need to cross cut our pieces to width. Can't do it at the miter saw because it's too wide. Here at the table saw, we run into a couple of issues. I can't use the miter gauge because the miter gauge falls out of the track. There is a trick, hey now, where you can take the miter gauge, put it in backwards, and then use it this way. I always forget about this trick. You can also use a big old crosscut sled like this, and you can push your piece through. I don't use my crosscut sled anymore because I made a big old sliding table for my table saw. I've got a video on this if you wanna check it out. This has been a game changer here in my shop, especially for cutting large pieces at the table saw. This thing, ah, this thing is so cool. Look how far back it comes, all the way back here. Look at all that, look at all that crosscut capacity. In woodworking, there are multiple ways to do nearly everything. A lot of times when you're cutting against the grain on plywood, on the bottom side, you'll get some gnarliness and ruin the veneer. A cool trick to get around that is, one, you could put a piece of tape on there and it'll hold those fibers in place, or you can lower your blade so it just scores the piece, then raise the blade and then cut through again. So check this out. And look at that, a perfectly clean cut. Absolutely no tear out. I cross cut all of those pieces just a little oversized because we're going to edge band them. I probably didn't even need to worry about tear out since they're a little bit oversized. Woodworkers love overkill. So we went to KenCraft and we found this absolutely beautiful piece of walnut that we're gonna use for the edge banding and some other parts of this project. But the reason I wanna use solid walnut for edge banding is it takes a beating a little bit better than the iron-on edge banding. So I am going to set my fence using one of the pieces of plywood. I'm gonna go just a hair bigger than this and then that is going to give me the almost perfect thickness for the edge banding here. If you see me using a piece of scrap up against my fence to set my width and then cutting, that's because you can't use your fence and a miter gauge with a through cut on the table saw. It could pinch in there, come back, fly, hit you in the face, or go through the window. You don't want that, you don't want that. We're gonna glue the solid wood edge banding right on here. I found that the easiest way to do this is with clamps. That sounds crazy, but I know a lot of people will use like the bandy clamps. I've done that many times in the past, or just tape. But the walnut, the solid walnut, some of it has a little, a little dip in there. And with the clamps, I can force it to get right in line with the wood. And then we can use these bandy clamps in between. For these little guys, we're gonna keep it simple. We're just gonna use tape. The edge banding glue has dried. I sanded everything flush. Didn't take much sanding since I just went a hair oversized. And now I'm gonna cut everything down to its final width. I'm just taking off a little bit just to clean up those edges.
We're gonna use 45 degree miter joinery for these carcasses. Now there's some debate on whether or not you have to reinforce those miters when you're using plywood. So I'm gonna split the difference and not reinforce them, but instead reinforce the whole structure. And I'm gonna do that by cutting a dado in all of the pieces, and then the back piece is gonna fit within that dado, and it's gonna add some structure and some stability to the whole thing. If it doesn't make sense now, it will later. Probably, probably, probably it'll make sense later. Most people would probably use a dado blade, it takes like two and a half days for me to set up a data blade. So I'm just gonna use the blade that's in there and just make a pass, nudge it over, make a pass, and just keep nudging it over until I get the perfect data. I said earlier that you shouldn't use your table saw fence and your miter gauge at the same time. This is the exception when you're not cutting all the way through because there's nothing to get trapped and fly back and hit you in the face. So now I'm just gonna nudge my fence over and make another pass. The carcass for each one of these nightstands is gonna have 45 degree miters. Typically, I do this at the table saw, but Stumpy Nubs has convinced me to do it at the router for greater accuracy and a better chance of success. So I am going to do that with a chamfer bit, but I'm gonna hog away most of the material at the table saw because I don't have the best dust collection set up for my router yet. If you're going to use a chamfer bit, then it's gotta be at least the thickness of your board. So this is a big boy. This is not sponsored, but this is a white side chamfer bit. And it's got a cutting height of three quarters of an inch. It's definitely my biggest chamfer bit that I own. Never mind the jank dust collection setup that I have here. It's not gonna be perfect, but it's gonna work okay for now. So I got my bit almost to the perfect height. I'm gonna sneak up on it and it's gonna take a couple cuts because I want this to be absolutely perfect. So I'm just gonna run this through, bring up the bit just a little bit more and then run this through again. I'm gonna link to Stumpy Nub's video down below. He goes into this at great detail. It's just a good video. We got that height nailed and perfect. So I'm gonna use some feather boards to make sure my board is pushed down. So that worked out great. So now we're gonna do a little decorative chamfer using the same bit on the front. This is why we use solid walnut for the edge banding. It gives us that option of roundovers or chamfers. If you use roundovers, you already know what I think about you. One last thing before we glue this up is we have to cut that back piece that's going to fit in this dado. That's the piece that's gonna sturdy up this whole thing, which means I don't need to reinforce these miter joints at all. I should mention, you probably want to sand the insides of these before gluing up. We got glue in all the places where there should be glue. Actually, we don't. We've got to put glue here. This green tape is nice and stretchy. It also breaks, but it works really good as a clamp. And uh, there we go. Two successful glue ups. They came out really good. I got I got some really, really good seams. Probably the best mitered seams I ever have. I think the router bit is the way to go for the future. I, I ain't mad at that at all. It's totally okay to just admire your work. Like this is one of those moments I'm like, this was, uh, yeah, this was super simple and easy, but it's just satisfying when you see it start to come together 
and the thing that you had in your head that moved over into the 3D drawing program to the real world? Oh, it's just satisfying. We are going to go over the design process of this here shortly. So a lot of you have been asking how, what's, what, how, does, how do you come up with the ideas? What's the design process? We're gonna go over that here shortly. So this is going to get attached to the wall using a French cleat, which is basically two 45s that nest into each other. So I'm gonna cut one piece that gets glued into here and then another piece that is going to get attached to the wall. This is going to get glued in there like this. This will get mounted on the wall, and then this whole thing will drop into that mount. That, my friends, is a French cleat. A French cleatus. I wanna quickly go over how I came up with the design for these nightstands using an app from today's sponsor, Millinote. This app has changed the way I organize my projects and how I funnel down from idea to finished design. I'm gonna show you how I use it here in a sec, but first let me go over some bullet points and then we'll get into the juicy stuff. Millinote is for people like us, creatives. It's a way to organize your ideas visually. And creatives are a weird breed. Some of us like organized chaos and some of us thrive on a defined grid. I'm somewhere in between, more so on the defined grid side. And Millinote can work either way. You can use it for mood boards, checklists, notes, sketching, and so much more. Okay, this is how I use Millinote to come up with this nightstand design. It's a desktop and mobile app, but it has a browser plugin. So as I'm researching nightstands on any website, I can quickly add images to my mood boards, but it's more than just a photo gallery. Within the app, I can crop in on a photo. So when I'm looking at my mood board, there's a clear focus. I can draw directly on the mood board and take notes. And the images will link back to the original website. As you can see here, I started gathering images for a floor standing nightstand, but then I got pulled in the direction of a floating nightstand. I was able to circle and make notes of the elements that I liked. Quickly sketch what I wanted to make and started making a checklist and a production schedule. And there's a ton of pre-built templates so you can just jump right in and get started on organizing your ideas. There's so much more this can do but an important feature that you should know about is how you can collaborate with other people. You can invite team members to your board, or in my case, my wife, who's the co-designer in this house project. Millinote is available for free with no time limit. Sign up using the link in the description and start your next creative project. Seriously, not only have I used it in this project, but I've been using Millinote in all my other projects over the last few weeks. Millinote has become a very important part in my creative workflow. All right, we got to get back to the bottom shelf on this nightstand. We got some figuring out to do. So we're gonna do something a little experimental here. I'm not sure if it's gonna work. I'm gonna make it work somehow, but I wanna have a shelf that comes out like an L from the bottom of the cabinet, but I don't know how strong this will be. I'm gonna figure that out after I build it. Big solid edge wood banding on the front. On the sides, I tried to go as thin as possible, and then we're just going to tape and glue this on there. We're gonna assemble the L and then we're gonna problem solve. Don't let big clamp companies talk you into buying more clamps. Let Pachudo talk you into buying more tape. For this bottom shelf, which is gonna be connected like this, again, I'm doing the miter joint. I hogged away most of the material over at the table saw, and now I'm gonna finish it off over here at the router. This will definitely need to be reinforced, so we're gonna take care of that in a little bit. Also, for the front edge, I made a chamfer. The bit was already set from the previous chamfer, so I went ahead and did that. So now over here at the table saw, I got my blade set to 45 degrees, which is gonna go into this 45 degree angle, and it's gonna cut a groove so we can add a spline on there to strengthen up that joint. Still not 100% sure this is gonna work. Rule four. So we're gonna use some 1 8 inch plywood to. This is my favorite scene. This is my favorite scene. Check this out.
This walnut plywood isn't as dense as Baltic birch plywood in the cores, so I still don't think this is going to be strong enough for a shelf. So I think I have to reinforce it even more after this. I don't have the spline going all the way to the end because I'm gonna fill that with walnut. <clears throat> then we're gonna use these corner clamps to make sure that it dries square. I don't have a I don't have a lot of confidence in this bottom shelf. I mean, I'm going to do other reinforcements, but if it's if it's like we were just discussing, if it's floppy at all, if there's any movement at all, it's just going to feel disgusting and feel cheap. So, I'm having second thoughts. So this could actually be screwed into the wall as a separate piece. <sighs> I'm thinking I'm working this out. I'm working this out. This is, this is why you build prototypes. This is a drawer from a previous project. I was going to use drawer slides for this, but they're gonna, I just, I don't think this is the right application for drawer slides. I don't think they're gonna look as good as wood on wood action. So we're gonna use solid wood for all the sides, like on this drawer. You got a little rabbit there, and then you got some baby dolls there. The front of the drawer and the back of the drawer are gonna be slightly smaller than the opening. I'm gonna cut it to the exact dimensions of the opening and then finesse to that perfect side. I think my whale nuts is just a little too thick, so I'm gonna plane it down just a little bit. This walnut looks so good. I hate planing any of it down. On the front and back pieces, I'm going to create a rabbit here and here to accept the side pieces. So I got my blade two thirds of the way up and then I got my fence set to the width of the boards. We just cut away. So now we're gonna cut a groove on the bottom of all the pieces to accept a quarter inch piece of plywood. I got my blade set to three eighths inch high and three eighths inch from the edge. Daniel, what is that in millimeters? Nine, approximately. I've already sanded the insides of all the drawers. It just makes it easier now. And we will be reinforcing these joints once the glue is dry. Uh, love it when it goes together perfectly. All right, that is a successful glue up. So to reinforce these drawers, I'm gonna put dowels in on the sides here. And I got a maple dowel, just like we have a maple bottom. Time to drill some holes and pound some pegs. Now that the drawers are all done, we got some problem solving to do. So let's go temporarily mount this nightstand on the wall and see what we got. I'm a little worried. I'm a little worried. This might not work. I'm gonna test the French cleat out. I'm going into one stud and two drywall anchors, and we're gonna see if this works. This is fingers crossed. <laughs> Definitely want to be going into a stud. Oh, come on, fingers crossed. Oh, that's pretty good. So this guy is 24 pounds. And I'm gonna put it on the edge. That's about the max, I would say. Maybe. I'm thinking, what if somebody throws their suitcase up on top of there? I'm thinking, I'm thinking. We had a really good brainstorming session that I kind of wish was caught on camera. 
So uh, obviously it's not gonna be this high. This is just for demonstration purposes, but I think we're gonna create like a wooden C bracket here and then a wooden C bracket on the other side. The thing that was bothering me about that was that curved pattern doesn't repeat anywhere else. So I've decided to make a big drawer pull that will have those rounded edges. If we go back to the mood board that I started before this project, one of the images that I gathered had this big drawer pull with the curved edges on the handle. So I'm gonna just pull inspiration from that. That is gonna be used for my drawer pull and then the C brackets down there. It's gonna sturdy the whole thing up. And, and actually, I think it makes the project look so much better. Another thing that I gotta fix is I edge banded this first before putting the spline in there. So I'm gonna cut the edge banding off and then redo that. just draw out a half circle here. That is gonna go there like that, there like that. This all gets attached like that. I am, I'm happy. This is going to add so much strength and keep, a, keep that wobble out. Since this is technically the back and will be up against the wall, I can screw in from here I could screw in from the bottom and then those pieces are secure. Doing the same that way. I'm gonna pocket hold this guy to the top along with glue. I'm liking it. I like this better than my original design. Even though this isn't an angled pocket hole, I still like using the pocket hole drill bit and the pocket hole screws is because the way this is designed, it pulls the two pieces together because of the way it's drilled out and the way the screw is designed. I want that to go just deep enough so that head will fit below the surface. And for the back piece, we're gonna use real pocket hole joinery to attach it to the cabinet. Gonna add some glue here. Always get the screw started first. Now we get to glue this to the cabinet. You see that glue squeeze out? That's these screws pulling the pieces together. If you've made it this far, you're my kind of people. If you want more, check out my Patreon where we now have early and ad-free access to videos, plans for all these house projects, including these nightstands, store discounts, and access to the Make Something Private Discord. I absolutely love how these came out. I'll talk about a couple things I would change here in a sec, but first, I was not able to install these at the Airbnb house because the floors are drying from a fresh refinish. You'll see them installed in the next video in this series, which is going to be a custom bed to match. So instead, I'm showing them here in our house. I didn't add a built-in phone charger because it wouldn't account for all the different charging scenarios for people staying here. So I will be making a custom lamp with charging and electrical ports. It's now super sturdy since adding the C brackets and a lower shelf. I need to draw a half circle in the back to allow for lamp and charging cables to come through. Other than that, I couldn't be happier. The reason I chose a floating nightstand so it'll be easier to clean under as this would be rentable to viewers of this channel. I am making every piece of furniture in this house. You'll be able to stay here once we're done. Here's a playlist of all the videos in this series. As always, be safe, have fun, stay passionate, and make something.